Okay guys, so make sure you have out this sheet on 2.1 and also you're going to need to get out your quiz that says section 2.1 on it because there is a problem number three that I need to give you uh, the two numbers that you're going to be working with. So make sure you have both those out. Pause if you need to and go find that quiz. So let's do a quick review of natural numbers. We looked at this in section 1.2 and what natural numbers are also just called the counting numbers. So if I had to list the natural numbers, they're just those basic counting numbers that you would start counting with. Okay. And then the whole numbers are those natural numbers with the zero along with it. Okay. So if you're looking at these numbers on the number line, I have zero denoted to kind of splits this number line into two. The positive numbers are those numbers that are going to be to the right of that zero. So there, there would be those, these natural numbers that are labeled on these ticks. Okay, so to the right of the number line, we have these nice positive numbers. Okay. Okay. To the left of the number line, we're going to denote those as our negative in or negative numbers. So, to the left of zero, one tick, we'd have negative one, then negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So you saw how I denoted those negative numbers. Now, if we look at the number line as I've marked it, those are what are called the integers. There are these nice whole numbers with what I call the, the opposites, okay? So if I had to denote those as a set, right, it's infinite in both directions. So it looks something like that. It's just those whole numbers and their negative counterparts. They're, they're the opposite, what I call the opposites. So these pluses and minuses are really important when we're trying to locate a number on the number line. Because if it's positive, we're going to denote it by counting the ticks to the right of zero. And if it's negative, then we're going to denote the ticks to the left of zero. Now, another part of this section talks about comparing numbers. And the, we're going to be doing those with equ inequality symbols. So if your inequality symbol is in this direction, it means less than. And if your equality symbol is facing this direction with, I always call this a mouth, is opening up to the left, that's going to be greater than. And it's very easy to do these problems, especially if you have number lines. So it says fill in the correct symbol. So what I tend to do is I'll just locate where these two values are on a number line. Here I have negative 7. Here I have positive 7, and the further to the right a number is, the larger the value. So it's pretty clear to see that positive 7 is definitely further to the right than negative 7. So negative 7 is less than 7. So this is the correct symbol. Now there's a couple ways that you can remember that. Our book gives you a helpful hint and says that, the, think about almost this as an arrow. I'm going to put a little arrow here and that the arrow points to the smaller value. You can look at it that way. The arrow will point to the smaller value. I was taught that this is a mouth. So you can make that into a mouth, and the mouth wants to eat the bigger number. So that's how I learned it. But however you want to think about it, the arrow points to the smaller number, or the mouth eats the bigger number. That's how you want to uh, orient that sign. So now let's look at 0 and 4. So 0 would be right here. Negative means over here to the left is zero. So the further to the right you are, the larger the number. So obviously then the zero is going to be the bigger number. So I always think that the mouth is going to eat that bigger number. Or the book will say that the point points to the smaller number. Okay, and then the last one, negative three and negative six. Here's negative three. Negative 6 would be located right down here to the left of it. So again, it's pretty clear the further to the right you are, the bigger the number. So negative 3 is definitely going to be bigger than negative 6. So our sign would go like that. 
All right. Let's flip. Just about done with this section. Here's that helpful hint. Uh, the point on the inequality sign always points to the smaller number. Or if you want to learn it the way I learned it, the mouth always wants to eat the bigger number. So either way, those helpful hints will work. The other concept that we need to get down is what's called absolute value. And this is the notation, these nice kind of vertical parallel lines that will surround a number in which you're looking for the absolute value. And now our book talks about absolute value as the distance a number is from zero. Now distance is always a positive concept, right? You can't go negative two miles. That doesn't make too much sense. So when we talk about absolute value, we want to realize that our answer is always going to be a positive value because this isn't positive. So you'd read this as the absolute value of negative 9. Another way to think about it is how far or how many points or how many units is negative 9 from 0? What's its distance? And that would be positive 9. The absolute value of 6, well, how many units is 6 away from 0? That would be positive 6. And the absolute value of 0 is 0 because you are 0 distance away from 0. So absolute value is a concept that we'll need to review. And the last concept is what's called finding opposites. Now it says if two numbers are the same distance from 0 on the number line but are, opposite, uh, but are on opposite sides of 0, well, they're just called opposites. So 4 is the opposite of negative 4 because they're the same distance away from 0 but on opposite sides of 0. Okay? And here's another little note that they ask you to look at in the book. Now this is how I read this. I read this as the opposite of negative A. So the opposite of a negative number would be its positive. And that's how I think about this kind of notation. Okay? So let's look at finding opposites. So the opposite of 13, well, that would be negative 13. It's the number on the opposite side of 0 that's 13 away from 0. So the opposite of negative 2 would be 2. And the opposite of 0, well, that would just be 0. All right, and the last little bit. So I'm, this is how I like to read these. So this is saying we're starting with negative 5, and then we want to take the opposite of it. That's how I read that negative, or that symbol. So the opposite, oh, found that, right? The opposite of negative 5 would be 5. This would be the opposite of the absolute value of negative 2. Okay, well, let's look at this piece first. So, what's the absolute value of negative 2? Well, we always said absolute value always gives you a positive number out. So, this would be 2. And then, I've got to think about what the opposite of 2 would be. And that would be negative 2. Okay, let's try this one. This says the opposite of the absolute value of 6. Well, the absolute value of 6 is 6, and then I'm going to take the opposite of it, so the answer to that would be negative 6. All right, let's see how you do it on the last page. You say evaluate. Okay, so if x is equal to 2, all right, we're going to put 2 in here for x, all right? So let's go ahead and wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 2, and then we'll read it. Well, the absolute value of negative 2, we know absolute value is positive, so that'll be 2. And then this says, take the opposite of it. So this would evaluate out to negative 2. Let's look at this one. All right, we're going to put 3 in for x. So this will be the opposite of the absolute value of 3. Well, I know the absolute value of 3 is 3, and now I'm going to take the opposite of it. So that would be negative 3. So take a minute. Why don't you pause the video if you need to and try filling in this chart 
and then we're going to do it together. So take a minute, pause it, see how you do on it, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll check it. All right, here we go. Let's see how you did. So the number is 5. Its opposite would be negative 5. And the absolute value of 5 is just 5. Opposite of 3, okay, or opposite of negative 3, well, that would be positive 3. And the absolute value of negative 3, well, that's just 3. This column is always going to be positive or 0, right? Because the opposite is 0, 0, and the absolute value of 0 would be 0. But I know this column, absolute value, is always going to give me a positive number, unless I'm trying to take the absolute value of 0. Opposite of 27 would be negative 27. And if I take the absolute value of a positive number, I'm still going to get a positive number out. Opposite of negative 11 would be positive 11. And then again, no matter what number I have in there, if I take the absolute value of it, I'm going to end up getting a positive number. All right, last few. All right, it says... Write the words you would say to read these expressions, and then we'll simplify it. All right, so we would read that as the absolute value of negative 5. And the absolute value of negative 5 is, it's got to be positive because it's absolute value, just 5. How we would read this? the absolute value of 3. And, again, we know that all the answers, if it's just plain old absolute value, the answer is going to be positive, positive 3. Now, this one's a little bit different because we're not just taking the absolute value. We're taking the opposite of whatever we get out for that absolute value. So, how I would read this is the opposite of the absolute value of negative 4. Alright, so let's take it in pieces. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4, and now we take the opposite of it. So that answer is going to be negative 4. Okay, again, We've got the absolute value of 27, but then we want to take the opposite of it. So this would be the opposite of the absolute value of 27. And it's a positive 27. Okay, the absolute value of 27 is 27. And then I take the opposite. So that simplified out would just be plain old negative 27. And then the last problem, we have negative 18 in parentheses, and then I want to take the opposite. So that would be the opposite of negative 18. Okay, we've got negative 18, and if I take the opposite of that, we know that would be positive 18. All right, so we will go over more of this in class, but that is the basics behind 2.1. The only other thing you need is this question on the quiz. It's blank on yours, but I want you to fill in these numbers. So for number 3... This should be negative 13, and then you're going to go ahead and take the absolute value of it and the opposite of that number. And then, this is an interesting one. Here they give you 90 as the opposite of a number. So what number did we start with if its opposite is positive 90? And then here's my hint. Don't forget, this absolute value column will always be positive. 
So this quiz is due at the beginning of class on Wednesday. Please give me a call or email me if you have any questions on it. And then we will be continuing our discussion of 2.1 on Wednesday. So I'll see you Wednesday.